Hello, welcome back students. My name is uh, Mr. Namaswa. We are going to look at our 19th lesson. We are going to look at production methods. And I would say we have three types, uh, three methods of production. We discussed job production. We say we have batch production and the floor production. We looked at them now, we are only going to look at their characteristics, the opportunities, and the limitations. We already did the characteristics of features for job production. We looked at the advantages and the disadvantages. So today, we are going to start looking at batch production. We are going to look at what features it has, what, what opportunities or advantages it has, and what disadvantages or limitations it has. Uh, remember we say in batch production is where we are producing similar products but in batches. They are similar but not identical. For example, we talked of bakery where we are making bread, we make cakes which are different. So, we run cakes particular type of cake. Once we finish, we clean and we produce bread, we finish, so What are the characteristics? We are saying similar products are made in batches, for example in bakery, make one type of bread, then one type of cake, furniture, clothing. The opportunities or the advantages are that it's flexible work and change products easily. Okay, which gives some variety for workers' jobs. More variety means what? Consumers have more choices. What are the limitations? One, the machines must be reset to do different batches. So every time you finish, you have to reset the machine before you do another. So the finished product may need to be transported around, which increases the cost, and there's need space for new stocks of raw material. Then we go to the floor production. We we'll say here we are having large quantities of our product produced. The ingredients start one end and flow to the other end ready to be sold, for example, cars, rings, electronics, animals, and products are made. The advantages are that the high output, it's capital intensive, meaning it's more efficient and reduces the cost of labor. Benefits from economies of scale because we are producing in mass and works in 4 7, meaning you can work the whole day, the whole week, the whole month. There's no need for labor because we are mostly using machines or capital goods. Uh, then we say moving goods around all men in the same place. The limitations are one, it's very boring for employees, it's very boring. High cost of inventory of output of raw materials. The cost of setting up are very high. And if the machine breaks down, the whole production stops. All right? Now, we want to go a step further and look at what we're referring to as automation. Now, when equipment in a factory is controlled by a computer to do mechanical processes, e.g. painting cars, right? So we are using computer to control the production, like painting of cars. So only workers are there to ensure it runs. So the whole process is being controlled by that's why we say it is automated, right? Like you are painting a car. The computer is going to do all the paint mixing, it's going to do all that. The human beings will only be there to 
mature into one small baby. Mechanization is when production is done by machines but operated by people. Okay? So, the work is being done by, by machines. But the machines are being operated by people. For example, in tea picking, when you want to pick tea leaves, right? We have those machines that are used to pick. But the machines are mechanically operated by human beings. That is mechanization. So this is used to do difficult, precise, or dangerous tasks. And it can work 24 7. 24 hours, 7 days a week. Computer aided design, or what we call CAD, this is a software that helps design or restyle products quickly, allows technical sketches to be very detailed. So this is, uh, we are doing uh, design products very quickly by use of software that runs on computer. It's called computer aided design. Then computer aided manufacturer, CAM, the other hand refers to a situation where computers monitor production and control machines like using robots. CIM, computer integrated manufacturing, when software that designs the products is integrated with the machines that produce. So this is a combination of computer aided machine and computer aided design scatter. We want to look at something very important, which is costs and scale of production. This is our unit four point. Now, when we are producing, there are various costs that are involved, right? We have what we call fixed costs, or what we are calling overhead costs. These are costs that do not change with the number of items sold or produced. So these are fixed costs. Whether we are producing zero quantities or we are producing 50,000, the fixed cost is going to be constant. It's going to be constant. Now the fixed costs must be paid regardless if the business is making profit or not. So it does not matter whether we are making profit or not. But the fixed cost must be paid. I'll give you an example. In Airways, we've been making losses for over 10 years. Every year, losses. Now, despite that, there are some costs that they have to pay, whether they make profit or not. And one of them is the salaries and wages. They have employees, they have workers. So whether they make profit or they don't, they still have to pay the salaries. It's a fixed cost. They occupy offices that use electricity. Okay? So whether they are putting their, like now they have had uh, flights not operational until the 15th when we started domestic flights. So since March, their aircraft were not operating, especially those on the carry passengers. Yet they had to pay electricity. They had to pay rent if they rented any property. So those are some of the uh, costs that are referred to as fixed costs. Now what are some of the examples of fixed costs? Number one, we have rent of factory. So even if you produce a lot of products, the rent price will be the same. Now, let us look at our situation here. Assuming the school did not own this land, 
Anitel rented. The owner of the property does not care whether there are two students or there are thousand students. If they say rent is 100,000 every month, that is fixed. So if you have 10,000 students and you make 50 million profit, you still pay 100,000? Even if you have 100 students and you make a loss of 3 million, you still pay a rent of 100,000 shillings. So rent is a fixed cost. Number two, insurance. Now, you set the insurance cost before you decide, I want to be paying insurance premium of 4,000 every month. So that becomes fixed. So it does not matter whatever happens. You will still pay 4,000. That is also a fixed cost. The bank fees, okay? Uh, the bank fees are a set price. They don't change depending on the products. So you have to pay 1,000 shillings every year for the bank account and it does not the salaries, okay, and the staff costs are all fixed. That brings us to the end of our first part of the lesson. In the next part, we are going to look at the variable costs.